Hey guys, my name is Gavin and welcome back to a brand new video and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to make virtual Lil Uzi Vert type beats. So yeah, that kind of styled stuff. Um, if you're new around here, feel free to drop a like, subscribe if you haven't already. Join my Discord, there's going to be a link down in the description. And also this loop that I'm going to be breaking down today is from my new loop kit. The, uh, I forget what it's called, that's not good. Uh, the cluster loop kit, that's what it's called. Um, it might be out when this video drops, it might not be. Um, Hopefully it is. Uh, I'll have it linked down below and you can go check it out for free and download it for free in the description. So yeah, uh, let's get into it. So this is an interesting loop um, to say the least. Uh, you're kind of already getting into that when you make virtual, uh, but this is like, I don't know, it's pretty cool. So let's get started. I used the one shot for the initial melody and I just played this repetitive pluck right here. Let me get rid of the bass notes for this first part. And we don't need this top part either, so we can just play this. And that just loops across the whole thing. And then for this bottom, these bottom notes right here, um, I just broke them, or broke them. I just put them down um, to G sharp instead of A sharp. And I go back up, and then I have them go up here to C sharp, and or to C, and then C sharp, and then D sharp, and then this is a C sharp here. So this is kind of trying to create like an upwards movement. Um, and get to the peak of the melody before it resets back down to the initial melody. And I thought by doing that, it did a really good job at transitioning uh, back to the start of the melody. So let me erase or get this back here. So after that, I laid in some bass notes. Uh, this is a pretty repetitive pattern here. I also used this note to kind of give it a little bit more variation um, and uniqueness. Uh, so I have these notes, bass notes right here. So I just have A sharp, which is the first note right here. I, I drop down to a G sharp, which happens to be the note right here. And after that, I actually go up to a an A, and I also brought these notes down to an A. And then I did that because, as a listener, you're not really uh, expecting this A here. It's the leading tone in the scale. It kind of it's technically out of the scale, uh, but it sounds good. It's one of the exceptions in music. There's a bunch of exceptions in music, but this is just one of them. So, uh, so it sounds like kind of like um gives it like a more dark kind of feel uh and then after that i just go up the scale with the c c sharp and f and then i felt like this f was um like when you're making melodies there's some stuff that you can't quite explain it's just all about how developed your ear is and for me i thought that this f did a good job at transitioning back down to this a sharp um and music is all subjective so i'm sure a lot of people would maybe not agree with this F. They would have it something like maybe like an A. Because um, an A would probably transition well um, just because it's a half step below the A sharp. But I'm not going to test it. You can do whatever you want in music. That's the beautiful thing about it. There's no rules whatsoever. So then after that, I just laid out a top line. And it looks super daunting. But when you're making these virtual beats, um, you want to use a lot of repetition. So notes like these right here um these 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 um they're all pretty repetitive but they give it kind of that edm uh feel that is very popular in virtual beats so like almost like rolls so i'm just going down the scale here so think of this as just like a roll um pretend these two aren't here um this these uh extra two notes just serve as a roll going down to the t sharps and also when I do this, I'm really trying to create some sort of rhythm. Um, I don't really like listening to melodies and stuff that don't really have a unique, um, definitive sense of rhythm. I think that's definitely a really important part when you're making melodies. Um, but also, like I said, music is subjective. So at the same time, beats with little rhythm, just like really simple stuff, or also can be catchy. It's all about what the artist does on top of it. So getting sidetracked. So going down scale, scale. I just like the way this sounded, so I duplicated it right here again. And then here I did, um, I played around with the velocity a little bit. So if you zoom into this area right here, let me make it a little bit bigger. Uh, there's like a staircase kind of thing going back up to this top note right here. Uh, I thought that gave the melody a little bit more variation and made it stand out, made it a little bit more unique. And then I, ha I go up the scale here because uh, I'm trying to get back to this F, which is the initial note in our uh, top melody. 
and I thought that by just going up the scale, um, it sounded complete. Uh, and yeah, so that's why I did that, and that just loops over again, I'm pretty sure. And that's basically it for the first sounds. I didn't randomize anything, I didn't add any post-processing on the initial melody sound, I just liked the way it was already, um, it already sounded. So yeah, after that I move on to this, which makes the melody stand out um, a lot from a lot of other loops. In my opinion, uh, it's a very unique melody to say the least and this is also something that you probably haven't seen before so uh pay attention so this is a slide note and to get them you delete this this note uh right here would normally just be uh like gray like that i think that's i don't know green whatever uh so you click it you make it darker gray and you can click them in and bam you have one so these notes slide um between notes I'll, you'll you'll see what i mean right here so we have an f so I have two Fs playing here, but it also kind of like slide. Think of it like as almost like a triangle. So we start here, and then we're going up to the C sharp, and then back down to the same F. So it gives it like a weird slidey feel. And then I have two more notes right here, continuing that slide down. Um, it sounds not out of tune or anything, but just really unique. And it's something that you can't achieve, like a sound that you can't achieve um, unless you use these slide notes. So this is what a lot of people do in virtual music. Um, I don't really think it's talked about enough for melodies, so that's why I'm kind of breaking it down today. Yeah, it's using these slide notes. So it sounds like I use these notes um, to get some sort of groove going, the rhythm, so important. Rhythm is very important. Um, just repetitive notes going, and then I go back up to the F right here. And I wanted to switch it up, so I just go down the scale. Uh, instead of just having this part loop, I go down the scale. And then I have a D sharp here. And since it's closer to that C sharp, it doesn't give as much of a wobble um, like this one does. Because that note is like, that C sharp is super high up compared to the Fs. Uh, so it like, almost talked a little bit. But you can still hear it. And now... Originally, I just had this melody duplicated over, so it was just a four bar, four bar pattern twice, and I had this right up here because it was duplicated, but since we used that leading tone to start right here, I thought that it sounded a little bit off. I'll, I'll play what it sounds like um, without it. It doesn't sound bad or anything, but for my ear, I liked it when this was also a leading tone note, that A note. Like dark, spooky, and then after that, I have these F's doing the same thing right here. And I want to, it's like almost like a ghost kind of feel. Um, I'm saying kind of so much, I gotta stop saying that. Um, but it just goes up the scale using all of these uh slide notes, and you'll see the effect or you'll hear the effect that it gives off. It's like very like haunted, ghosty. And the reason I finished the melody off with this G sharp, in my mind and for my ear, that sounded like the note that I wanted that would help complete the phrase and transition back to the F. So yeah, whenever I make a melody, I really try to focus on my endings and making sure that they loop back right. Because um, there's nothing worse, in my opinion, in a loop than a loop that sounds good the entire time. And then the ending is just kind of, just kind of, it's just weak. Um, compared to the initial part of the melody. So that's definitely something that uh, when you're making loops, I would try to focus on, uh, making sure your melodies transition well back to the start. So after that, I didn't put any effects on that, I don't believe, uh, nothing. Uh, just one shots again so far. And after that, I just layer the bass notes with the piano and a low octave from Omnisphere. And the reason I do this, I do this in a lot of my loops, it's just because it gives uh, low end to the sample which is definitely an important thing to do but it doesn't give too much like a bass to where it, it's just like a sub frequency there's some mid frequency in this as well so it helps just fill up the sample a little bit more so i would highly recommend that if you don't already do this uh give it a shot give it a shot uh and it might turn out well so this is what it sounds like so yes yeah, so after that 
Uh, I don't know if I put any effects on it. Didn't put any effects. I originally had a one shot, but I switched it to the Omnisphere because I thought that um, a real piano VST has a lot more like dynamic range and things you can do with it. Because um, a one shot doesn't really have an algorithm to it, like Omnisphere pianos and stuff. Uh, they sound completely different if they're in a higher octave. Uh, if they're a one shot than they would if they were like an atmosphere piano because it's just like that algorithm that the VST has that makes it sound more realistic when it's higher up. A one shot can't do that. So one shots are good for like C5, um, C4, like that whole range and maybe up to C6, a little bit higher than that. But after that, they all kind of start, start starting this. Ugh, they all start sounding the same once they get up to like right here because that's just how one shots are but not hitting on one shots um i used to not like one shots but now i would definitely say that i'm more of a fan of them so then after that i just have this uh it's following the bass notes and you can see that i randomized it a lot give it like a wavy feel and just following the bass notes it's just hitting like this uh again further establishing some sort of rhythm and I like to have different types of rhythms, like this one, uh, they, I feel like they all counteract if you do it right. Uh, they all bounce off of each other and just give like a full sample that has like a meaning to it. I feel like that's also a very, really important part when you're making a sample, making sure you have some definitive direction and meaning to the sample. So yeah, solving the bass notes, nothing crazy about that. Again, no effects on it. No post-processing was done on any of the samples individually or any of the sounds individually. But now we can get rid of these. I bounced it out. Uh, I have everything playing right here, and I just have one at a time. Uh, these are the two final samples right here. And yeah, I'm, I don't think I'm gonna talk about the drums that I did on this. I just did the drums for fun. Uh, but if you wanna see a separate video on virtual drums, that kind of thing, be sure to let me know. So after that, I have these two samples. Uh, you can disregard this one. This is where like I made a beat underneath it. Uh, I didn't separate the project files. I would recommend doing that, but for this um, FLP, I did not do that. So after that, I exported them all out, and then I pitched everything down a semitone. This was originally not there. I just threw it in there uh, like that, and then I made it unique. Let me... Uh, so I made it unique, and then pitch it down a whole octave. So it's going to sound like th this underneath it, except without effects, it sounds like this. Oh, I pitched it up an octave. I don't know what I was saying. I pitched it up an octave. But then I, I like to put micro shift on it. Reverb, just drown it in reverb, and then EQ out a lot of the high end. So it's uh, mid frequencies and low frequencies, just in that higher octave. So it makes a sound kind of just like a separate reverb. Um, and I just tucked it underneath the main melody. And on the main melody, I EQ'd some of the low end out. This is kind of an ugly EQ. I normally don't EQ much. Um, normally don't EQ anything at all. But for this, I took a little bit of the low end out from the piano, uh, a little bit of this mid frequency out. Um, I thought it sounded just a little bit better, but that's all subjective again. And then I just put ozone eight elements on it, made it sound a little bit more um, different just by using these presets, a little bit wider, uh, louder. I highly recommend that if you don't have ozone, uh, you check it out because uh, it's cool. So yeah, <laughs> after that, so what the final sample sounds like. I use this as kind of a reverb, like I said before. I'm gonna say kind of just so often now, apparently. Yeah, so sounds like. Push it down here for the final beat. I'll play the beat though. Yeah, it's really simple drums behind it. Um, I didn't want to do anything too crazy with the drums because the melody was already a pretty crazy element. Uh, so yeah, I feel like having simple drums kind of counteracted that and balanced everything out. But yeah, that's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you were able to learn something from this. Um, and I hope that if you want, you check out my loop kit. It should hopefully be working. Um, maybe I'll just have like a Google Drive link to it or something if it's not on the website right away because I really want to put it out today. But again, I hope you enjoyed. hope you learned something. Feel free to subscribe, join the family that is growing at a pretty good rate. Um, but yeah, have an awesome rest of your day. Keep making beats and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.